Hello everybody, I'm Jack Ivey once again live in the studios of WRMG TV 12 and also Television 97. You might be watching this on Facebook or YouTube channel. Wherever you're watching it, I want to say how much we appreciate you for watching the political forum. And we promised you we'd have Dr. Larry Stutz, who's your current state senator for District 6 in North Alabama, back with us. And guess what? We got him back again today. Doc, good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you. And uh, of course, we, us two gets together, uh, we like to talk and like to uh, talk about the campaign and everything. And sometimes we run out of time. So we get back together today and uh, talk about some other issues. First of all, for the folks that might be watching this one, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, I'm Larry Stutz and I grew up in Cherokee in Northwest Alabama and uh, was graduated from high school there in 1972, then went to Auburn University undergraduate and to veterinary school. Jackie and I met while we were in school there and uh, we have been married for 38 years and four years into our marriage. I went back to medical school and so we lived in North Alabama then we moved to Mobile for four years while I attended medical school at the University of South Alabama and then we moved to Birmingham for four years while I was in residency in Birmingham and we have uh, four adult children and have five grandchildren and I think I said we've been married 38 years. Sounds good. I'm sure I'm glad to have you back with us today and of course uh, I had to ask this question, even though I didn't bring it up on the first interview. All of this that he has told you here, we're talking about 22,000 patients later and 12,000 babies delivered. And uh, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? It is. I have really been blessed to be busy and to uh, have the opportunity to interact with a lot of families and in all sorts of situations, but primarily with uh, them having their family. And of course, I'm sure you uh, uh, run into people all the time and say, hey, uh, you deliver me back in so and so and all that stuff. So that's got to be that, some. That, it, that's very rewarding, but, uh, you know, it's hard to recognize them when they're 20 years old <laughs> as well. But we appreciate you joining us once again on the political forum. And uh, we talked about several issues during our first interview. And I wanted to go back and uh, let's talk about uh, jobs in North Alabama or jobs <laughs> in Alabama. and. You've got a lot of business endorsements. What would make them want to endorse you? Uh, well, I have been proud in the last four years to support a very strong, low-tax, pro-business climate in the state. And that is so important in bringing jobs here. You know, when we compete with, uh, for the Mazda Toyota plant, for those type of industries, we're competing with Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and so Alabama has to have a competitive environment or we don't ever even get the first look, much less uh, land the, the plant. But having said that, the thing that you cannot forget is it makes headlines to land a Toyota Mazda plant but most of the jobs are still created by people that employ less than 50 people. The majority of the jobs are still in small business and we don't want to get so wrapped up in recruiting major industry that we forget about the true backbone of the economy and that's small business. And because I have supported that, I've been endorsed by the National Federation of Independent Business, by the Alabama Realtors Association, by the Alabama Re Retailers Association, by the Alabama Forestry Association, all of those groups that support small business, that support local communities, that encourage uh, small business development and want small businesses to thrive, I've been endorsed by all of them. And I, I have a 100% voting record with the National Federation of Independent Business. Sounds good. Dr. Larry Stutz, our special guest here on the political forum today. And of course, we're talking about jobs and, you know, small businesses uh, is the makeup of all of the little smaller towns. And we've seen a lot of these smaller businesses go away over the last several years. And uh, anything we can do to kind of keep these smaller towns thriving is uh, trying to get folks to shop at home. You know, a lot of these local businesses, they, they go out on the limb to open up a local business. And, and then the folks at home won't shop with them. They're still going out of town. What can well, we do to maybe try to get folks to well, shop at home? Uh, e even more than going out of town to shop is shopping online. Right, yes, sir. And so we have passed legislation for uh, internet taxes. 
because it's totally, I'm not in favor of raising taxes, but it's totally unfair for the local business to have to collect sales tax and the uh, internet salespeople not to have to collect the sales tax because that hurts not only the tax revenue for the local community, but it hurts the local business because you can go to a local store and pick out the style and the size and everything of the shoe that you want to buy and then order it online and you right off the top you're getting a nine or a ten percent discount right. because you don't pay the sales tax and and so leveling that playing field is so important for the local businesses that have to have brick and mortar that are part of the community and uh, uh, I 100 percent support shopping locally uh, supporting local businesses. They're, they're the backbone of the communities that we all live in. Collecting the local taxes, <laughs> say from online sales, uh, let's say that I'm ordering something in Cherokee, Alabama, online. Uh, when y'all collect that tax for Alabama or whoever, does that come back to that local it community? Does. So, so if you buy something online at a 35582 zip code, that money will come back to that zip code. That's, 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 that's that awesome. Is, that's so. correct. That's the way the law was set up. You know, a lot of folks uh, don't know it, but you've been endorsed by the National Rifle Association and also the National Association of Gun Rights, and uh, that's a pretty big endorsement, isn't it? It is. That's a, that's a, a huge endorsement, both of them. And, you know, I unequivocally support our Second Amendment rights. Uh, I, I think that uh, it is a constitutional right, period. Uh, and even though I know some the sheriffs would probably not agree with that, uh, I honestly don't think you ought to have to buy a permit. Right. Uh, there's no other constitution. You don't have to buy a permit to vote. You don't have to buy a permit to have free speech. You know, the other constitutional rights that we have guaranteed. And the other problem with it, even if you have the permit, is the wide discrepancy in what it costs across the right. state. Uh, it ranged from, depending on what county you were in, from I think from about five to about fifty dollars to buy a permit, depending on what county you were in. And so if we're going to have the permits, at least we need to standardize that. And what we did in the legislature this past session is said that you could buy it in another county. So we didn't get them all standardized, but we did free people up to if you wanted to shop around and the county next to you was cheaper than the county that you lived in, you could buy it in another county from where your residence was. That's but I am very proud to have both of their endorsements. And I said I also have, although they're not directly related to hunting issues, but the Alabama Forestry Association uh, is has been a major supporter and a big help in my campaign and it's because I have the rural roots I grew up hunting I live out in the country now I respect gun rights uh, and uh, that's why I have those endorsements Dr. Larry Stutz our special guest don't forget November 6th it is upon us and uh, of course you need to make your plans now uh, to get to the polls I'm sure if you don't have a ride if you'll call your friend neighbor somebody will get them to the polls uh, retirement Systems of Alabama, <coughs> RSA, a lot of folks are interested in that and of course with the economy doing so well, uh, how has that helped as far as uh, the retirement system? Uh, it has helped the retirement system because the economy has improved. Uh, year before last we had a bipartisan joint legislative committee that uh, was made up of Democrats, Republicans, House members, and Senate members. And I was one of the Senate members on that committee. And we spent, uh, we actually met five times between legislative sessions to try to look at issues with RSA. And there has been a lot of false information about what the intent of those meetings were. And I said, I attended the meetings. I was on the committee. I never heard one person ever say anything about trying to take anybody's retirement away. And I know that rumor keeps getting propagated by uh, people that want to attack what the real issue of that committee was. And that was to try to make sure that RSA was stable for the long term, that it was stable for the future. Uh, 
because there are some fundamental problems and everybody wants to look at the surface and do you support Dr. Bronner? Well, absolutely, he's done a wonderful job, but he's also almost 70 years old and he's not gonna be in that position forever. And so you have to look at the long-term issues. If we're going to hire people today and promise them a defined benefit plan 25 or 30 years from now, you've got to make sure that that money is going to be there. And that's the whole intent of it. Because the fact is, the state subsidizes RSA. The first year I was in the legislature, we put $920 million into RSA from state funding. Right. This past year, we put $1.12 billion in RSA from state funding. And the problem there is, if you look at the numbers that, uh, that RSA has to have to pay the benefits that are promised, they need about $50 billion in assets, and they need to earn about an 8% return on those assets. Currently, they have $34 billion in assets, and for the last 13 years, they have averaged 6.3% return. So that $16 billion difference in assets and that 1.7% difference in return, and the state makes up the difference, and that's where that $900 million to a $1 billion comes in that goes to RSA every year to make up that difference. I asked you during your, our first interview with Dr. Stutz, you know, why should I vote for you? I'm going to ask it a little bit different way. What sets you aside from your opponent, Mr. Moore? Uh, what, would, what would be the difference between well, you? Well, I, I know that we don't agree on, on several issues, uh, like, like the lottery, uh, for one. I know that we're on opposite sides of that issue, and I have strong reasons of why I believe what I believe. But, you know, the number one thing probably that sets us apart right now is that uh, I'm not a career politician. Uh, I think our founding fathers intended citizen legislators. I think our founding fathers intended for people to go as public service, go represent their district, go represent their constituents, and then go back home and do their job. And I've served one term and he served seven. And I'm a term limits guy. Uh, I. We had a bill this past session in the Senate and to limit legislative terms to three terms. And I was one of nine senators that not only co-sponsored but voted for that bill to have legislative term limits. We have term limits for all sorts of other officers in, at various levels of state government, but we don't have it for legislation, legislative branch, and I think we should. What would you say, before we wrap it up, is your biggest accomplishment so far as a state senator for North Alabama? Uh, I think probably if you said just for North Alabama in general, it would be working on uh, education funding and specifically for UNA. Uh, UNA has historically ranked 14th out of 14 state-supported universities and I have worked diligently for the last four years to increase UNA's funding and actually did that in this past session. Uh, we got an extra two and a half million dollars uh, of funding for UNA and the biggest appropriation that they've ever gotten this past budget. But uh, there's still a lot of ground to be made up. Uh, and so I guess if you said the one thing, it would be UNA is vitally important to all of Northwest Alabama and uh, to try to get them on a level playing field with the other state supported universities uh, is a major priority and we're, we've taken baby steps in the right direction, but they have been ignored by our local delegation for so many years that they've fallen further and further behind in, in state funding and said they in fact ranked dead last in funding out of the 14 state supported universities. Of course you know I'm always going to live with you. Have an opportunity to ask for the folks <coughs> vote out there. We always uh, save a camera for our candidates that come in on the political forum and give you a chance. Folks you don't realize how important this election is coming up on November 6th. Not only just on a local level but a state level and a national level and of course uh, I'm going to give 
Dr. Stutz at this time a chance to ask for your vote. Okay. Thank you, Jack. I, it has been a real honor to represent you and represent this Senate district for the last four years. And I look forward to representing you for four more years. And I promise that I will continue to represent you with uh, the values and the principles that we share and with honesty and integrity and transparency and availability for anyone to contact me. And I would very much appreciate your vote on November 6th. Thank you. I think your ad says if honesty and integrity means anything to you, Stutz is the man, right? Absolutely. Tell Miss Jackie we said hello and the I family will. and uh, keep those uh, grandkids. Uh, I think you've got them kind of spread out. Y'all gonna we have, have two in Atlanta and three locally, and, so uh, we so get gonna, to see the three here every day, but the two in Atlanta not near often enough. Sounds good. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Appreciate Denise on the controls. Folks, I emphasize once again, November the 6th, if you don't have a ride to the polls, make sure you ask your neighbor. I promise you, somebody will get you out there and you can vote uh, for your candidate. Of course, Dr. Larry Stutz wants your vote and support. And if you'd like to send him back to Montgomery, Alabama, you need to go vote for Dr. Larry Stutz on November the 6th. And he's running on the Republican Party and he wants you to reelect him. And of course, he's gonna be running, of course, reelection. For Denisa, once again, Dr. Larry Stutz, our special guest, I'm Jack Ivey, saying thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on the Political Forum. Y'all have a great day.